Good morning and God's blessing to each one of you this morning. Uh, it's great to be with you this morning, even though it's just virtually. It's, uh, my heart goes out to each one this morning, especially during this COVID-19 period of time, especially those who are struggling in any way, whether it's through just discouragement, uh, anxiety or fear, that uh, God would uh, grant you a sense of encouragement and peace and joy at this time. Certainly think of those who are in the healthcare profession, that again, God would uh, provide his hand of protection and his shield of protection uh, as you do out your uh, duties. And for those who are in shut-ins, it can be a very lonely time without any uh, family around you, any visitors. So certainly pray that God's uh, sense of uh, peace and uh, comfort would be with you as well. So this morning, as we dig into the lesson uh, on Isaiah 61, uh, the Lord loves justice. And I guess the question uh, I'd like to start with is, uh, how full is your cup this morning? David in the Psalms often talks about his cup is overflowing. Uh, can you say your cup is overflowing? Or maybe if you're like me, and I do struggle with anxiety from time to time, and I think that's somewhat genetic because I think I sort of pass it on to my kids, is uh, sometimes I need my cup popped up. This, uh, this is certainly a season of uncertainty, and with that, we see lots of different emotions in people. What are some of the emotions that you would say you see in people? Um, I, I would think there's a lot of anxiety in people right now. Fear of the unknown, the uncertainty. Um, yeah, just we are told that, you know, for example, schools are going to be starting again on May the 4th. And now we've been told again that, no, they're not gonna be starting May the 4th, maybe May the 12th. And it just, it's just, it's just the fear of the unknown. It's just not knowing what to expect, not to know, mm -hmm. not knowing when this is going to end, when we're going to be able to come out of isolation. I think that for a lot of people, it can be depressing mm -hmm. being cooped up in your house. Oh, <clears throat> for me, for me, Anyone who knows me knows I am a very social person, and it's been very hard for me not to be able to go and see my family, to meet with my friends, uh, playing games, and yeah, it's just it's it's just hard. Yeah, this season is certainly harder for extroverts and introverts. Us introverts don't uh, find uh, spending time, quiet time, quite as difficult. Yeah. But certainly the extroverts certainly miss that social time. Yeah, for sure. So our prayer is that whatever situation you find yourself in, don't be afraid to ask for help. Talk to somebody about it, but have confidence and be encouraged that the Lord goes before you and will be with you. What are some of the uh, scripture verses that you find dear this time? Deuteronomy 31.8 says, the Lord himself goes before you and he, be he will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Psalm 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says, Let us run with perseverance the race that is set out before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. <clears throat> yes, good good uh, scriptures to remember. Uh, so this lesson text is taken out of Isaiah 61. So I just wanted to read, go through the, the chapter together this morning. In Isaiah 61, I'm hoping that uh, it will leave you rejoicing greatly in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And as we look at how God values each person, each one of us, and calls us by our new name, and will leave your cup of joy overflowing this morning. So Isaiah 61, just to give it a bit of context, if we turn back to Isaiah 56, the first few verses. This is what the Lord says, maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. So then Isaiah goes from there, uh, 56, 57, 58, 59, up to 61, he describes how the Israelites failed miserably at uh, living out righteous lives. And that takes us right to Isaiah 61. And Isaiah 61, if you look at the chapter, I'd almost break it down into two parts. Uh, first of all, is the Messiah and his mission. 
and then the result of his mission as displayed in our lives. So, Becky, if you would read the first uh, part, mm-hmm. right up to uh, the year of the Lord's yeah. favor. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So where do you find these verses familiar? Where have you heard Jesus quote these verses? Jesus had quoted this when he was teaching in the temple. It was it was his proclamation of announcing that he was Messiah. He is the he is the one that is going to be that has been sent to bind the brokenhearted, to free the captive, and release prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus was proclaiming that this is now being fulfilled in Him when He was teaching in the temple. Jesus had claimed that He had fulfilled His prophecy. Jesus came to proclaim the good news of His salvation, and by bearing our sins on the cross and being released and raised again, to have victory over death. And declaring that all that believe in him and are born again of his spirit are declared forever righteous. He came as a savior to seek and save the lost. And that was his primary mission. And we see the purpose of his mission then in verse 3. Do you want to read verse 3? To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Wow. Um, Those are powerful verses. Uh, He calls us from our state of spiritual depravity and wants to transform us to righteousness. And notice what he calls us. He calls us oaks of righteousness. What do you think about when you think of oak, an oak tree? What symbolism is there for an oak tree? Yeah, as I, th- I think of oak trees as being strong, sturdy, unwavering. You know, the wind comes, but they don't blow over. They're, they're pretty steadfast. Hmm. Yes. Oaks of Righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. The world will notice something tangibly different in your Christian life. In our behavior, we should display his character to the world. Jesus saved us to display his righteousness so that he will be glorified. So whatever you're doing this week, remember that you are a oak of righteousness on display to bring him glory. Uh, let's read the, why don't you read the rest of the, cha- the chapter. I think the rest of the chapter sort of deals with more our response to his mission. Everlasting joy will be yours for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seed to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Wow, that's great. One of the verses that uh, speak to you this morning as you read that uh, those verses together. Some of the things that stand out to me is that uh, when you started there, that first verse in seven, I think, uh, everlasting joy. That is something that we all seek, isn't it? Everlasting joy. You know, we as a society, uh, we all like to pursue uh, joy apart from God and other things, other pleasures. Well, God is the only source of true joy, and uh, we can only find that in him. What are some of the things that you've noticed that stands out to you? Yeah, so what what really stood out to me is is that that we're clothed with garments of salvation. I mean, just to think of that word picture of being clothed in salvation and what a gift and and honor it is to to have that, that the Lord has granted that for us. 
well, that's what makes us righteous. And I like the adjective that's used there. He has, he has, it's already done. He has clothed you with garments of salvation and arrayed, arrayed you in a robe of righteousness. Let's just think about that. Can you imagine what it would be to meet, what it'd be like to meet Jesus face to face? Mm -hmm. Isn't there a song that you always listen to? What's the title of that song? The song is, I Can Only Imagine by Mercy Me. And the words in it just are a very powerful song in imagining what it would be like when you're standing before Jesus. You know, what what, are, what is your reaction going to be? Are you going to be able to stand in his presence? Are you going to be on your knees before him bowing? You know, will you be able to sing hallelujah? Will you be able to speak at all? We know we're going to be in awe of him still, surrounded mm -hmm. by his glory. What will my heart feel? You know, and just in just that whole aspect of not knowing how we'll feel, just be so mm -hmm. overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But the, mm -hmm. the line that that I think I appreciate the most in the song is that we are going to be forever worshiping. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's so true. We will be worshiping. I don't think we I don't think we'll be self-conscious and ashamed about the sin when we face, but our own sin. But uh, as, as the scripture we just quoted here says, we will be covered from head to toe with uh, a robe of righteousness. So we, we will be washed clean. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful thought that is. Mm -hmm. uh, as we look further, it uh, talks about uh, seeds. Uh, for as the soil makes a sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow. I think about seeds. Uh, that's a, that's the seed's natural response when you put it in the soil is to is to grow is to flourish. And uh, another analogy when I think about seeds uh, for us farmers or for your gardeners is uh, you plant a seed. A seed has its own uh, parental genetic D DNA planted in, into it, and uh, its job is to produce a plant that has the exact rep replication of its uh, parental material. So just as the Holy Spirit is planted in each one of us, uh, we should produce a life that speaks of his character and of his attributes. And through sanctification as God's chosen people, we are to be a replica of our heavenly father. How well are we doing at reflecting the father's image to the world that we connect with daily? I was thinking about being a true reflection of the father. I thought about our trip to, uh, to Washington that we done a couple years ago. And we toured uh, and, and looked at a lot of the state buildings, which were just granular in their stone structure. And how each uh, each one of those buildings had a pool in front of them, uh, a pool that was probably water that was only a couple inches deep. But just the job of the pool was to reflect the, the splendor of the building. And I thought about that. You know, how 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 well are we doing at reflecting the splendor of the Father? And that's what we want to sort of leave you with, leave with you this morning is how full is your cup of joy this morning? It is probably directly proportional to how clear your gaze is upon Jesus Christ and how much you fully comprehend what he has done for you. I just want to finish off by reading a few verses in Psalms, Psalms 103, the first few verses. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works just the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Hope you're blessed by that this morning. Let's uh, take some time in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just uh, commit this time to you right now. We commit the, the service to you. We just thank you for who you are and what you have done for us. Thank you for providing the true gift of salvation as we've just come through the Easter season. We're so thankful for your death and resurrection and the uh, hope that is in your resurrection. Thank you for this uh, everlasting joy that you offer each one of us, that it's only found through you. Thank you for this everlasting peace that we experience through you as well. Father, thank you for this time as we spend it together this morning. We just want to finish by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for never and ever. Amen.